We have a special guest with us. You know him, you love him. It's the uh, founder of the Gray Zone. It's Max Blumenthal is with us. Uh, hello, Max. How are you? Good to see you. It's been a while. Been a while. So the reason why I had Max on is because I am now officially a part of the uh, mm. Ukraine kill list, right? So the Ukraine government has this website, and anybody who tells the truth about the, the war in Ukraine, they put them on a kill list, and they actually kill some of them. Uh, and so I'll just show you what it says on here. Here's what it says up here. It says it's non-government center for research of signs of crimes against the national security of Ukraine, peace, humanity, and the international law. Information for law enforcement authorities and special services about pro-Russian terrorists, separatists, mercenaries, war criminals, and murderers. So that's what that's what they say we are. And so there it is. That's my close up. It's not a bad. It's not a horrible picture. Uh, dissemination of Kremlin pro so so then what does it say here it says it says dissemination of Kremlin propaganda narratives with an aim of receiving financial compensation from the aggressor country justification and informational support of fascist Russia's open attack on Ukraine and then there's the big page and it lists all my YouTube sh stuff that I've that I've when I've told the truth about Ukraine they list them that's their evidence for me being a bad person that should be killed and then down here it says this it says the peacemaker center asks law enforcement agencies to consider this publication on this site as a statement that this citizen committed a deliberate act against the national security of ukraine peace the security of humanity and the international legal order as well as other offenses now th this guy uh what's his name uh, david miller wrote an article about this list and in it, he says that, so why do they have this list? He says, it will, the, the issue of Nazism in Ukraine will be seen in retrospect as a defining issue of our era. And it is important to remember that the reason I and many others are threatened by the Ukraine government and their NATO backers is because we, in turn, threaten to expose them for what they are, Nazi collaborators. And that's what the Ukraine government is. As it turns out, the covert kill list website is a product of the Ukraine regime, effectively funded by the CIA, among others, and is hosted by NATO. Yes. One extraordinary thing is that the many American citizens, including ex-military and intelligence operatives, are included, as well as significant numbers of citizens of NATO member countries. Perhaps the most remarkable element is that NATO has hosted the site and a collection of affiliated websites on its servers in Brussels. At the same time as NATO think tank, the Atlantic Council boasts that Henry Kissinger is on its board of directors, NATO also hosts a kill list website on which Kissinger appears. So let me bring in Max Blumenthal, who's also on this list, and uh, along with Aaron Mate, who also works at the Gray Zone. And so NATO's hosting this? It's funded by the CIA? Is that true? Well, I'm I'm actually not on the list, which kind of makes me worried. Oh, I thought you were on this list. Just Aaron is on it. Anya, Aaron and Anya Parampil. Oh, okay. Our other colleague at the Gray Zone recently appeared on it uh, just days before you appeared. So they're going after more American public figures and journalists than ever before. Please. And go ahead. You know, they say in the upper right hand corner of the site, if you just go to Mirot Voretz, the peacemaker website it says langley virginia but i don't know if that's just like a troll or or, uh -huh. or what i don't know who's actually maintaining it i've seen a lot of evidence that they that the servers are in brussels what's clear to me is that the ukrainian government it's not clear to me it's just this is just a fact elements in the ukrainian government openly support and promote and participate in the maintenance of this website, this malicious website. One figure is named Anton Garashenko. He is a special advisor to the Interior Ministry, which oversees the Ukrainian SBU, which is the security services that maintain the death squads that go out and kill suspected collaborators, disappear political dissidents, terrorize elements of the population, political opposition, 
in a completely autocratic society run by Vladimir Zelensky and that the Ukrainian government and the SBU, well, first of all, the SBU was trained by the CIA after 2014, after this U.S.-backed coup, and the Ukrainian government is like funded directly by us. So, I mean, just based on what's publicly known, we are, we are behind this. I, I, my personal opinion is that this website and there are other initiatives of the Ukrainian government that have targeted me are like a proxy for the U.S. or U.K. government to attack their own citizens without having to do it directly. So he actually went into a little bit of detail. I don't want to get too into the yeah. weeds on this, but I'll yeah. give you a little bit of it. He says, let's start with the Kill List website itself, at Myro Trevets. Today it's located at myrotravets.center, but it was originally at psb4ukr.org. That domain was first registered on the 14th of August, 2014, some six months after the U.S. backed Maidan coup that overthrew the democratically elected government of Viktor Yanukovych. Three people are associated with these domains, and they provide valuable clues to who and what was involved in the Kill List site. They are Victor Garber, a longstanding Maidan activist and co-coordinator of the Maidan Mo Monitoring Information Center. He was the first registrant of Myro Travet's domain. That's the Kill List website. And August of 2014, he had previously owned the domain of Maidan Monitoring from 2001. The group also has its existence. It has been in existence since before the so-called Orange, Rev Orange Revolution in 2004. It was, of course, funded by the National Endowment for Democracy, the foundation known as the CIA Sidekick, and the International Renaissance Fund, the Ukraine branch of the Open Society <laughs> Foundation, run by George so Soros. Mitrovets lists thousands of saboteurs, separatists, and terrorists and traitors. Sometimes it has crossed out their photographs once they have been killed with the label liquidated. This, for instance, happened after the murder of Daria Dugina in Moscow in August of 2022. Today, the Mitrovets site houses links to two other domains, which appear to be integral parts of the operation. So... It, it is the Ukraine government. They are targeting people. This is funded by the National Endowment for Democracy, which is a CIA cutout. So this is our own tax dollars being used to target journalists in the United States. This seems like it would be a big story, except the yep. people who can make it a big story, the people in the corporate press, aren't ever going to be on that list, so they don't care, right? No, they're going to be honoring the... The government behind that behind that list i mean this is sick in 2015 a very popular journalist commentator in ukraine who condemned the maidan coup it was an undemocratic violent coup that started ukraine on the path to war civil war and a direct war with russia he was murdered in the streets of kiev by neo-nazis who are acting on behalf of the Ukraine security services. And he was targeted by that website, Mirot Voretz. They marked him off. Then uh, we saw in 2022, as David Miller mentioned in that article, Daria Dugina, who is a commentator and the daughter of a famous Russian nationalist philosopher named Alexander Dugin, who the whole Western press would say was Putin's brain, even though it's unclear if they ever even met or if he was even very influential in Russia. Um, she, he was targeted with a car bomb. She happened to be in the car that these Ukrainian terrorists targeted. And so they killed her and she was kind of an up and coming um, geopolitical commentator who has a, appeared a lot in international media. So they mark off on this website, liquidated. Months later, right, almost a year later, you appear on it. Anya Parampil appears on it. Aaron Mate appears on it. Scott Ritter's on it. Roger Waters is on it. Henry Kissinger, of all people, is on it because he warned against the consequences of the proxy war. And it is, so there's a clear precedent for this website inciting the murder, assassination of journalists, terrorism against the critics of the Ukrainian state. And yet there's no outcry, Jimmy, from any of these press freedom groups, the Committee to Protect Journalists and all these big time NGOs. 
about the fact that you're on it, that journalists are on it, award-winning journalists like Aaron Mate. And again, let's, so journalism, uh, so organizations that are set up to protect journalism from things just like this, they're not saying anything. Why would those, what, what organizations are those and why aren't they saying anything? Well, like the Free Press Foundation, the Committee to Protect Journalists. I mean, look at who's backing them. They're backed by people. They're backed by the Open Society Foundations that helped uh, fund the Maidan coup in 2014. They're backed by Pierre Omidyar, whose money helped set up a Ukrainian broadcast station called Romadsky that was designed as an information weapon to activate the Maidan coup. They honor journalists from these Ukrainian information warfare sites all the time at their conferences. So it would kind of cut against their, their agenda if they started to acknowledge that maybe this is not a state that's fighting for democracy. It's actually a sort of Pinochet-style autocracy run by a uh, comic actor, no offense, who uh, is turning to death squads to ice and terrorize all of his political opponents. I mean, Zelensky has illegalized all opposition parties. He has outlawed all opposition media. He has had his chief political opponent who ran against him in two successive elections arrested and beaten, and all of his associates jailed, hounded out of the country, or killed. We've seen on video people accused of being suspected Russian collaborators thrown into mass graves by neo-Nazis from the Azov Battalion. This is what's happening, and now it's coming to us. This is the terror and autocracy that we funded in Ukraine coming back home with the total silence of these fake press freedom NGOs, which also said nothing about Julian Assange. I mean, the Committee to Protect Journalists even issued a statement in uh, 2020, I believe it was, stating that Julian Assange is not a real journalist, so they're not going to mention him among their list of jailed journalists at the end of the year. Jesus, the whole goddamn world is corrupt like this now, right? There's no the whole West is corrupt. Yeah, the sure. whole mm -hmm, the whole West is corrupt like this. We we have a death economy. It's all about military and uh, hegemony. And uh, AOC, I, I was surprised. She's she's very sensitive to violent threats uh, towards people, public people, especially herself. Uh, she she hasn't spoken out about this. She hasn't spoken out about American journalists being targeted by a, a country, a government that we're propping up to the tune of a hun couple hundred billion dollars. He has no nothing. It, They're not saying anything about it. Isn't that something? I mean, they've just made a far set of press freedom. At least a, I think AOC signed the letter finally calling for Julian Assange's release. But, you know, it took this long. How what is, He's been in jail for for what? Five years just being tortured nonstop, held in solitary confinement, can barely even see his own children. So it took him this long. But, you know, the State Department had its uh, press freedom day event. And, yeah. I mean, they just make a farce out of it. It was great that they were interrupted by Code Pink because they wouldn't mention Julian Assange. But it's like you have to basically do what the U.S. government wants, like, like to be a complete – the, the guy that they they all centered this event around was the Wall Street Journal reporter who had gone for some reason to a metallurgical factory in Russia and was like asking employees how much weapons Russia was producing. Uh, he was sent on some kind of like suicide mission by his editors at the Wall Street Journal. So this is this is the U.S.'s cause celeb as they maintain the torture and persecution of Julian Assange indefinitely. So, I mean, and then this, this kill list fits right into that, it, it, right into the agenda. Uh, and are you are you a little surprised at how little coverage that something like this gets from even other independent media? Well, I actually, I, I think I was the first reporter in Washington, D.C., among the entire press corps in Washington. I mean, I'm not really a member of the press corps here, but I... I'm a reporter, I think, <laughs> to ask the Ukrainian ambassador to the U.S. about this kill list. And I was oh. standing there with Anya yesterday. Oh, you sent me that video. Oh, let me grab that video. Um, damn it. I forgot to grab that video and put it in this segment. Yeah, it's Shit. all right. I mean, it wasn't. 
Uh, we'll Ani put it in, in post. Play. We'll put that in in post. Uh, right. All right. Didn't didn't AOC fight harder for the guy that was stalking Elon Musk's jet? Yes. With an app. She yes. spoke up more for that than Julian Assange, <laughs> yeah. for sure. And she's not certainly not going to speak up for Aaron Mate, Anya Perimpel, or me for being put on this kill list by a government that we're in bed with. Isn't you, Aaron and Anya, being put on this list closer to literal violence than you criticizing her for failing to back Medicare for all? You would uh, think. Or like the force to vote. Yeah, you would think that this would be uh, at least r- r- rise to the level of stochastic violence. <laughs> <laughs> but they're corrupt, but they're stochastic trying. Terror. Stochastic terrorism, that's yeah. it. Yeah, stochastic, stochastic terrorism. So um, I'm, I could freak out about this. I, I, what, what, I, what am I supposed to do? Uh, um, I mean, it's a badge of honor in a way. It's not, I mean, if, if you were in Ukraine, you would have to flee your home. You would have already have had to, but you if if this happened now and you don't, were still in your home, you'd have to flee and go into hiding, and hopefully you'd be able to get out of the country. Well, also in Russia, they would probably come try to get you as well, like the other couple of people on that list. Yeah, they actually went into the Russian Federation, into Moscow, to kill a Russian citizen who is not involved in the military effort in any way. She was an intellectual. Um, and we've seen the Ukrainian... Ukrainian-backed terrorists target Russian writers and intellectuals inside Russia these past few weeks. Uh, first, uh, Vladlin Tatarsky, who was a military blogger. He had previously served in the army. They sent someone into a cafe in St. Petersburg who blew up the whole cafe and killed him. Bellingcat cheered that attack on, straight-up terror attack. They went and they, 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 they uh, car-bombed a Russian novelist who is a supporter of the war inside Russia. And they, the uh, deputy head of Ukrainian intelligence said that Ukraine aims to assassinate Vladimir Putin and Ukraine staged a drone attack on the Kremlin. So they're, ca- they're carrying out terror attacks inside Russia as their war effort falters. And they're putting all of their online critics, including a jack-off nightclub comedian, on a literal government kill list. I mean, does that sh- doesn't that tell you anything about the kind of government that we are sponsoring. I mean, I saw Samantha Power, the head of USAID yesterday at this event in Washington, brag about how we are literally giving $15 billion, we have given $15 billion in cash to pay Ukrainian teachers and healthcare workers and public employees. <laughs> this is why like Jesus. LA teachers and uh, teachers in LA have to go on strike to get better wages. We're literally paying them and she's bragging about it. And that government, at the same time, is putting our journalists, they're are marking us for death. And I wasn't put on this list, Jimmy, but another, another group called Molfar, which is based in London, uh, run by former Ukrainian government workers, they created this dossier of me, and they sent it to hundreds and hundreds of journalists and activists around the world. Um, and it was like this dodgy dossier claiming that Vladimir Putin had bought my home and it doxed me and my entire family and even my family's co-workers who have nothing to do with any of this contained all their personal information. Well, that, I can see the American press doing that, but it's a little obnoxious to, for the Ukrainian press. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> again, this is uh, the, the end of the, the Western civilization, as you know, it is coming to an end. I, 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 that's not hyperbole. <laughs> it well, the, really- mask on, the mask of liberal democracy is definitely lifted i mean yeah this everybody too- knows this isn't a war for democracy i don't think so people still i was on stage last night in burbank people still surprised to hear that we're actually in bed with nazis and it's not a putin talking point people still surprised to hear oh, that do you think you could uh maybe compromise and put a medal on a nazi at like a disney <laughs> uh, thing <laughs> that's right still john stewart hasn't been made to a po- to at least even explain why he put in a medal on a nazi he didn't know about it. The guy covered the th- he black should have son of the to, SS. Well, he should he should address it now, but he can't address it now because he would have to tell the truth about what's happening in Ukraine, and then all the Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden voters would hate him again. For, just like they hated him when he told the truth about the Wuhan virus being created in a lab. They hated him, ostracized him, and he doesn't want that to happen again. No. And so he's not going to tell people the truth about Ukraine, and he isn't. But he knows that Tucker Carlson is evil. Yeah, he knows Tucker Carlson <laughs> is evil, but not Joe Biden, the guy he probably voted for. 
<laughs> Tucker Carlson never bombed anybody or committed a war crime or tortured anybody. But he knows what he's doing. I'll be John's doing. <laughs> This event was about profiting off of war, turning Ukraine into a laboratory, Are you absolutely the ruins wrong? of Ukraine into a laboratory for the fourth industrial revolution. You are absolutely wrong. Um, getting the Ukrainians Ukraine. all in a digital. No, you are not interested in the, in yeah, the yeah, answer. Please. And can you tell me why my my colleague Anya Parker was on a kill list by your government? Your interior ministry maintains a kill list of journalists, and my partner here, Anya Parker, is on it. Unlike uh, in Ukraine. You can't kill and ban your opposition here. Our Nazis actually have to hide behind the government, not serve in the government. Check out my new stand-up special, COVID Lies Are Funny, at JimmyDoor.com. Only $10, become a premium member. We're going to be on tour in Northampton, Massachusetts, Syracuse, Cohoes, New York, Hartford, Los Angeles, Bakersfield, California, Baltimore, Maryland, and San Francisco, California. Plus, do we say Chicago? There's lots of stuff. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for tickets. See you there.